Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com Bringing you, yeah you guessed it, another stonefly pattern uh, You know how I am, I like my stoneflies and I try to get them simpler and simpler And this is no different um, This is a really cool pattern, I actually kind of copied it, tweaked it a little bit to my liking From uh, the guys at Firehole And uh, they tied it on a, I think a 316 and I'm using a 718 hook I like these hooks for my stoneflies They're, It's an all purpose extended length with a 2x gap it's a great stonefly hook because you, as you can see to it here it has a nice curve to it gives a natural bend to the body I really like this hook for my stoneflies it's pretty much my go-to on stoneflies now because I'm a, I'm a barbless guy and um, I just haven't found a hook that I like better it's a really strong hook too which is another you know I'm using a bigger fly trying to target a little bit bigger fish so a stronger hook is what I want um, we're going to call this one the hot spot stone because uh, we tie a hot spot on it here on the front and back of it and uh, it's really simple so let's get a hook in the vise and get started on it like I said the hook we're using is a 718 in a size 12 I'm going to tie this smaller too and uh, get a little bit smaller hook on it because Size 12 is about as big as I want to go. I could go a 10, it wouldn't be a problem, but um, these hooks have a nice length to them that I like. So I'm going to start this out with a 3.5 millimeter black nickel bead. The one we're tying is going to be a brown stone fly. We have a lot of brown stone flies around our area, so that's why we're getting and using this one. The th then I'm going to wrap. Um, 0.010 lead around it about 15 to 20 wraps you go as little as much or as little as you want but what you want to create is a taper there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the bend I'm going to go around the bend of the hook a little bit further than I normally would and the reason I'm doing that is to get a nice hot spot here okay and I'm just going to make extend it a little bit and then I'm going to make a bead here. The bead is going to be the bead of, a bead of thread, I should say. That's going to be to splay my tail out here in just a second. Now, once I get that on, once I get that nice little bead there and a nice little hot spot at the back, I'm going to bring my thread up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a little bit of bone dry and I'm going to put just a touch of bone dry on that bead there. which is going to keep this thread and uh, once we get to fishing it a lot of times what will happen if you put a hot spot like that with thread sometimes the thread will unwind and roll down around the hook so that protects it from that especially if you get a hook you know a fish hits its tooth on it or something pulls it down a little bit it just keeps it all in place by putting that nice little um, bead of glue on it there Next thing we're going to use is some strip goose biots. I'm using olive brown for this one. Now I also tie this in gold. So, uh, but for the brown one here, I'm going to use olive brown. I like that color. And we're just going to put one on each side. And I'm going to place one on each side. And I'm going to make sure when I put them on, they flare outward, not inward and just right on the side so it wraps back around the hook and then I'm going to put the other one on and try to keep it even Oops. and get it tied down and I want to make sure it rolls down towards that bead of thread there and as you see there as you wrap it towards that bead it splays it out really nice. So that's a simple way to splay, splay your tails using biots. I do it all the time on my videos. You've seen it before if you watched them. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to smooth this out with my thread. Now, if I was tying a yellow one, what I would have done was I would have tied that bead on. I would have got my hot spot on the back with my orange thread, brought my thread up, tied it off, went to yellow thread, okay? I would have went to the yellow thread because the yellow thread underneath the stretch tubing we're about to put on shows through the yellow stretch tubing. But we're since we're using brown, I want this to be a little bit darker. The orange isn't going to show through that 
thread and it'll actually darken it up a little bit which is what I want. So the next thing we're going to put on is a small or medium sized micro tubing and I'm going to put it on about three quarters of the way up there is where I'm going to tie it down and I'm just going to pull it back tight and wrap it clear back to the splayed tail. And then once I get it back there we're going to wrap our thread back up and just cover that up good and like I said get it all nice and smooth. This isn't doesn't make a really thick body so you want to make sure you get it smooth when you lay this thread out. Now I'm going to bring this up here and I'm just going to do a quick little knot so it stays in place as I use my rotary tool and then we'll just put our thread out over our uh, thread holder there and then I'm just going to take this stretch tubing and I'm going to roll it side by side just making a nice segmented body and wrapping it towards the front and you can see this is a very very easy nice segmented body we just created there and then we're just gonna have got a little too much thread out so I'm going to shorten that up a little bit and we're going to tie it off once we get it tied down tight there we'll just snip this off now when you do that when you cut that off there it kinda leaves a natural um, divot to it there it, uh, not divot not the right word but uh, incline I guess you'd say for to put the uh, the wing casing of this on and we're going to use two more goose by it's the natural brown again and I'd use yellow or like a cream color if you were tying a yellow a golden stone but we're just going to splay them like we always do I mean we're going to make a V with them then I'm going to lay that on there and I want to go about three quarters of the way back with it we're just going to lay it on top and then tie it down tied into place good and tight there and then the last thing we're going to put on is a collar here and for the collar we're going to use some dubbing and this was really simple and uh, this is a new product we started carrying in the shop here it uh, doesn't show up there here's your ice dub dispenser we real I really really like this stuff it's a hair's ear mixed with a with an ice dub it's like a 50 50 mix so it's it's really icy but it's also really buggy and the color we're using is, um, it's actually Harder's Bloody Black. And, uh, it's got, it's black, but it has like a red ice dub to it. So it creates almost a brown color, and it was perfect for this. So we're going to use our whip, or our dubbing tool here, our dubbing loop. And we're going to make a dubbing loop. So we're just going to wrap our thread on there. And then, I'm going to spray spread it out with my fingers a little bit so I can put the dubbing in between the loop and I don't need a lot here a little bit goes a long way when you make these dubbing loops so I wanna just spread this out so I get it trapped in there nice and even and then we're just gonna spin it around to trap them all in place and make a nice dubbing brush Okay, once you get, once it, <laughs> it's raining here at the shop and the dog didn't like it. So, next thing I want to do is I just want to bring my thread back over here on my thread holder. And we're just going to spin this dubbing up and we're going to, as we spin it up, we're going to pull it backwards so it tends to go back towards the back and doesn't trap itself. And that's how simple this stone fly is. It's a very simple, very natural, nice size stone fly. We're just going to trim that off there. And then I'm just going to wrap this around here a couple times. And then I'm going to build a big enough whip finish that allows me to see that collar. So there we go. I got a nice little hot spot collar on there and a hot spot on the tail. So that's all this to the hot spot stone. It's been my uh, anchor fly here lately. We've had a lot of high water, like I just heard there a little minute, a couple minutes ago, the rain coming down. 
got a lot of it in our area and uh, with the water being up I, there's a couple big deep holes I like to fish when I get in a big deep hole I usually throw one of these on the bottom get me down and then I'll fish um, the, the other fly that I just showed you the black and blue which was my last video um, I usually fish that up above it and most of the time I catch them on the black and blue but this is a great pattern it will also catch a fish to have one to get you down real quick so simple fly only a couple minutes to tie and it's a very effective very natural looking fly give it a try all the stuff you need to tie it we have at the shop and like I've been saying in my recent videos don't forget to get on to Facebook and like us on our new page on bugs and beards it's um we have a tying club that meets every other week in the shop and every every other Thursday we all just get together and hang out so if you're from the area come hang out with us Ty uh, sometimes we get special guests in and different things like that and we keep you updated on that stuff on both our Facebook page and on Bugs and Beard page so get on Bugs and Beard like us there too and interact with us we love having you there and talking to you thanks again for watching everybody Keep coming back for more. i got some exciting stuff coming up. And uh, I'll see you next time. I'm Sean Holsinger.